Last week, I showed you how to use some of the new features in the Lightroom Classics latest upgrade. I had a lot of questions about the new distraction removal tool that's inside. So this week, we're gonna do a deep dive to learn everything you ever wanted to know about distraction removal. Coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanard, professional photographer, and with the new release of Lightroom Classic version 14.4, Adobe introduced a powerful new feature called distraction removal. Now, I gave it a brief overview in last week's video, and I'll leave a link up here if you'd like to go check that out. I'll also leave it in the description if you want to check out that video. Because I received so many questions about this particular tool, this week's video takes a deep dive into distraction removal and nothing else. One of the subscribers to this channel, Brian, sent me a great idea to help streamline the learning process of Lightroom Classic. So for those of you already on my mailing list, you should have received an email a couple of days ago with a link to download the image that we're gonna be working on in this week's video. The idea is simple. Download the image in advance and follow along with me as we explore the new feature together. Now, if you like that idea but aren't on my mailing list, it's easy to join. Just send me an email to terry at imagelight.com. And if you're not on the list and still want to follow along, that's no problem. You can download the image by using the link that I'll put in the description below. So let's get into it. We're inside Lightroom Classic and we're going to go over into the develop section. And of course, the distraction removal is easily found under the removal key right here. You can hit this button right here and this will show you the different things in remove. As we scroll down a little bit, you're going to see this triangle, which you can untriangle, click downward rather, and distraction removal will be available to you right there. So one of the questions I got a lot was, will it work on reflections of photographs or pictures on the wall? And so let's give this a try. I've got a picture here. We'll just click downward on this. And then all you have to do, you got a couple of options here. You have quality is you can click this and you can go to preview or you can go to best. Now best takes a lot more time. It's not necessarily better, but it's probably a better quality when it comes down to looking at the pixels. So what I suggest is use preview first, figure out if you like what it does. And then if you really like it, then do it again under best. So all you do is click preview here or apply. Let it do its thing. It takes a few seconds to rumble through. Probably depends a little bit on the speed of your computer and also your internet. So look what it did. It removed some of that reflection. So kind of cool, didn't do it all, but this slider here allows us to control how much reflection we want removed. So if we go all the way to 100%, that's the maximum that can be removed. And if we go back to zero, you can see here that's similar to what we started with. Now if we go the other direction, then it shows you just the reflection, whatever the reflection was. So you, that, that's kind of a cool feature. I don't know how useful it is, but it's kind of a cool feature. So it does remove some of the reflection in a picture if you're taking a picture of something that has glass in front of it. Next question I got a lot was, will it remove eyeglass reflections? And let's take a look. Go into remove, go into our Distraction removal, hit apply. Let it do its thing. And let's see what we think. There's 100%. And there's nothing. So even when you go this way. So the reality is it doesn't do anything with eyeglass reflections. So just forget that. Maybe someday Adobe's going to do that because that's kind of something I think people would like a lot. But maybe you're asking AI to create the eyeball that's behind the reflection. That's going to be kind of difficult because if you don't have a reference for that, that's going to be tough to do. Obviously, if you're shooting people with eyeglasses, the best way to do it is photograph them normally with their eyeglasses on. And then if you want to take, have them take their, their eyeglasses off, take a few shots. And then that way you can cut those eyes into their glasses and leave as do it in Photoshop and you can leave as much uh, reflection as you like. If you want to see how to do that, I can certainly show that to you on a demo one day. So let me know in the comments or let me know it by email and I'll, maybe I'll add that. 
So here's what the reflection removal is kind of meant for is you're photographing somebody through glass. So let's take a look. We're going to go to our remove, hit apply and let Lightroom go through and figure out what's the reflection and what's the subject, which is, you know, not an easy task. And see what it did? It took away the reflection. So that's pretty cool. And if we want to slide this, we can look over and see what was actually the reflection. That's the patio. So you can see right there that as we do this, we can bring in just that reflection. Now it doesn't work all the time. Here's another image here. We're going to go ahead and hit apply and slide this over. And while it worked, you know, for part of the image, it doesn't work over this glare area around the eyes. So it's not hundred percent, so you can't depend on it, but there is a note that I kind of want to bring up about doing this. This to me is kind of a useless type of a, of a feature to me because I don't shoot through glass very often. Now as I've told that if it's helpful when you're shooting in aquariums or if you're shooting at the zoo through glass, but other, aquariums, I, I understand, but I'll tell you what, shooting through glass, especially at a zoo or your car, that glass is so impure compared to our lens lenses that we use. It's, it's not even close. I did a little test. I was shooting a hawk through the, the window of my car. I used the side window and also used the front window because uh, uh, I thought I would do a test and see how that looked. And, and the, 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 the results were just hideous of how bad that was. So whenever you're shooting something, if you got to shoot through glass, my suggestion is figure out a way to not shoot through glass. Maybe get out of the bus, get out of the car, roll the window down. Uh, that's just my take. Uh, because if you shot even a great shot of something through glass, it's not going to look that great. Because the glass that you're shooting through is pockmarked. It's got scratches, dust, and other things that's really going to... And, and the glass isn't quality glass like our lenses. So it's going to really downgrade the image uh, that you're going to finally end up with. So my suggestion is just try to avoid shooting through glass. But if in a situation like this, you know, or if it's a special picture or a picture of someone that, that you maybe couldn't get some other way, then maybe this is a way to go. Now, if you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video is released. I always read and respond to all the comments. So feel free to leave a question, a suggestion, or some kind of feedback in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Your ideas often inspire future videos, like this week's video on the deep dive into the distraction removal in Lightroom Classic. So you also know you can reach out to me via email, terry at imagelight.com. I'll be happy to answer your questions and I'll add you to my mailing list. So you'll be notified about future video releases that way. So here's the image that I sent out a couple of days ago to people on the mailing list. And of course you can grab it by going down into the descriptions and follow the link and go ahead and download it that way. But here's an image here. It was shot in Ireland in a cathedral and let's do a little bit of maintenance to it first. First, we're going to go into basic and we're going to tune up the exposure a little bit. So we'll bring it up a little bit. We'll take the highlights down just a tiny bit and we'll liven up the shadows. So that's a little bit better. The other thing I like to do, it was shot a little crooked. So I go over into the crop tool and I take this little angle tool. And all you do is you take this and draw it along whatever you want for your horizontal line, then let it go. And then Lightroom crops it. And you just say, hit enter. And now you've got the cropped image. So here we have our new image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a uh, virtual copy. Uh, you don't have to do that. That's just another step I take. So when I'm working on the image, if we want to go back and see what it looks like. So let's go into the remove tool and we're going to go down same area, distraction removal. And this time we're going to go to, we don't need this. We can triangle this back up. We're going to go to people. So we click on this and what happens is Lightroom starts thinking and says, Hey, where are all the people? And so it puts all these little red marks and these tabs on all of our images. So anything that we wanted to remove, uh, it's assuming these are all people. And we'll show you one thing that's kind of amusing here. Check this out. It didn't think Pope Leo was a person. It knew that was a picture. So I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, let's go back in here. And now we've got all these are marked, right? And in, in our color, 
this is our display color. Now, if you don't like the red, you can pick a different color if that's easier for you. You can pick any color that you like, and that's a way that you can work inside of this system. But we'll go back to red because that's going to be the default for most people. And for me, it's fine. And it does a little translucent type of a red, so you can still see whatever the subject is. And if you look close on these little tabs, let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. On these tabs, each thing has this little marker. And this little marker allows us to, to turn it off or on so we can select it or we can trash it. So this little trash can comes up. So if we didn't want her selected, we could just trash it. So let's go through here and see what we got. Got a person there. This person here, for whatever reason, she saw me taking pictures inside the church and she got right in the middle and wanted to take her picture. But I thought, eh, this will be good for distraction removal at least. So here's something that it thinks is a person, but I think it, I don't know, is it a foot or whatever, but we're gonna turn that off and we're just gonna remove it, right? We're gonna click on it and now we're going to hit trash. And so that's going to go away. So we don't need any work done down in that area. So let's go ahead and zoom back out and let Lightroom go ahead and do the remove. So we click remove. Now, one of the things that um, is uh, sometimes a question is in the remove tool, well, any AI feature that you have in Lightroom or in Photoshop, you have a certain amount of credits that you get from Adobe and Adobe will track these credits per month and then every month you'll get a new set of credits and that's for doing typically it's going to be doing for AI generation things so let's say you wanted to uh, create an image of a, a monkey riding a horse you know out of thin air then that's going to cost you a credit but if you uh, are doing this kind of thing remove it says the Adobe website says that this does not go towards your credits. So you can do this removing all day long and it doesn't take away any of your credits that you might use for something a little more extensive. So that's good to know. All right, so as we take a look here, we can see what Lightroom has done. We see there's a little, everywhere there's a little tag. If you, if you hover over it, it'll show you the area that was rebuilt, okay? Same over here, show the area that was rebuilt. And on the surface, we look at this, we say, well, it looks pretty good. Well, but there are some mistakes. So let's go ahead and get into those. If we, if we come up here and we do our little eyeball, we can turn this to see what has been different, right? So as we turn the eyeball off and on, we can see what it did. So it removed these, this person over here, but look what it did to this statue. It kind of created a half a statue in thin air created a podium. There's a lot of stuff here that we didn't really need it to do that looks a little awkward. So we're kind of lucky in that way is we can come over here and we can say, well, let's see what a different version is. Down here, you've got a different version where you can look to a, a different variation. So let's click on this and see what it does. So there it puts a big banner up and then it does an extended podium that might look a little bit more realistic. It's still trying to remove the people, but it really doesn't know what to do here with this background. So let's just leave that as it is. And over here, let's take a look and we'll do the on and off. So it removed the people, it put in a new pillar and actually rebuilt some of the pews here. And this one's a little awkward. So let's take a look and see if it made a little better version of that. That's a little bit better, a little bit more aligned. Let's turn this off and on. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So that second version there worked good. And of course, when you do a second version on one, it doesn't affect anything that you didn't highlight. So if you've got something that you've highlighted, it's not gonna affect it. So let's turn this off and on and see what else. Okay, did a good job removing the offensive lady in the middle. It removed him. This is pretty good. Let's come over here. Remove that person in the background back there and the person in the foreground. And I think there's another one right here. And again, you could see here that they, you know, did quite a bit of work removing this, uh, this background here. 
and it kind of rebuilt that pillar and rebuilt built the pews you know probably added an extra pew so one of the things to always keep in mind when you're working with remove is you have the ability to do this all on your own so let's come back to this one that was kind of a little bit more offensive in terms of how it really altered everything that we were working with so let's go ahead and let's no matter what the version was it's not going to work so let's go ahead and trash that okay so now that we've trashed it we go up to the original remove tool which is up here right this remove button right there now what we're going to do is we're going to do some of our own removal and so we're not relying on ai to to select exactly what we're looking for we can do this in a little more refined way by just using the cursor and a brush one of the things that's neat about this is now we have control over the actual mask itself right so we can add to the mask and add more over here or we can subtract to the mask and remove things if we want so we don't have that ability on the ai version it tells you what it is that would be nice to be able to go in and, and subtract and add on stuff like that but right now we can't so let's go ahead and go to remove <coughs> now that did a pretty good job of removing that person and it hasn't affected this here so let's go ahead and do that again we're going to remove this person back here hit remove awesome all right got a couple got a guy back here and of course we went a little over so we can just subtract on that mask and hit remove I think that looks a little more realistic you see the ai generated look at that again Ger ai generated like extra candles or something in the background so we're just going to leave that empty like that and now these two people here uh, again if we left this to ai it removes too much of the scene up here where the candles are and display of the statue so let's go ahead and just do this manually we're going to come around here we'll include her And whenever you're doing any kind of remove, you always make sure that you're just have a little bit extra. Don't get it too tight because if you get it too tight, then AI has a difficult time trying to figure that out. So make sure you got plenty of room around your remove. So we hit remove again. Ah, that looks a lot better. Now the last two people are, that we just have to work with are these two. So let's go ahead and grab his arm, his head, cover that up. Let me add to this over here. Make sure we got plenty. We can subtract a little bit here. There we go. Hit remove. It still is using AI and it's still not using any of your credits, but there it removes quite a bit better. So yes, it took us a little more time to remove all the people we wanted to out of this image. But the nice thing is, is that it actually looks pretty darn good in terms of that's how we started with and then we removed it so that was a pretty fast it didn't take that long to to remove all those people and while distraction removal did a great job in terms of doing the bulk of the work you kind of have to look close and see is this the variation that you want or maybe you want to change that variation of each individual tag that is set in the frame and then if it isn't, then go in manually and do it and go ahead and work out all of those little pieces one by one until you get an image the way you want it. So there's everything you need to know about distraction removal. Thanks for watching. See you next time.